Hi, I'm Hilke, and welcome to my World Machine tutorial series. This tutorial will cover four devices, being the inverter, flipper, curves, and bias gain device, all of which can be found under the filter tab. We will start off with the simplest one, the inverter. This device does precisely as advertised, namely inverting the values of your terrain. It only has one input and one output, and no parameters. Let's grab a radial grad and hook it up to the inverter to see the effect. The top of the bell-like shape is now turned upside down, making it the bottom of this pit. And the edges are now at max world height instead, as expected. And that's all it does, inverting your values. You can get funky results if you use a mask on it. For example, if we link the radial grad to the mask board as well, we now get a very smooth crater-like shape. Next up is the flipper device. This one is all about mirroring your terrain and, just like the inverter, is quite a simple device. Unlike the inverter, it does have parameters. Two to be exact. Let's open the properties and see what they are. We see two checkboxes, one being flip horizontally and the other being flip vertically. To see the effect of these parameters, we better hook up some asymmetrical terrain, something like a basic noise. Now, when checking the flip horizontally box, we see the terrain flips along the vertical axis, mirroring the terrain from left to right. Then, when checking the flip vertically box as well, we see the terrain is now also mirrored along the horizontal axis. Now, that may sound a bit confusing, checking flip horizontally mirroring the terrain along the vertical axis and vice versa, but actually it makes sense. If you want the terrain to flip in a horizontal direction, that is from left to right, you must mirror along the axis that goes from the bottom to the top, also known as the vertical axis. A fun fact, you can use the flipper essentially to rotate and map around, but at the cost of introducing artifacts due to mirroring. I have made this simple macro illustrating it and encourage you to try it yourself if you're up for a little challenge. I will post a link to a solution in the description of this episode. The next device is a bit more complex, being the curves device. This device lets you change the height value of a pixel, based on its current height value. It is easier to explain with the properties open, but before that, let's hook it up to a linear gradient. When opening the properties, we see a very different interface from what we're used to. At the top, we have one parameter and a few buttons. Then in the middle, we have the curve editor. And at the bottom, we have three slider parameters. Let us first address the elephant in the room, the curve editor. We see a graph with on the y-axis the output height going from zero to max world height and on the x-axis the input height going from zero to max world height. Then we have this diagonal line which represents the curve filter. Right now the filter does nothing and that is very logical because if we look at the curve we see that a pixel at half a world's height will have its value changed to half the world's height, or in other words, stay the same. You can see that by hovering over the knot in the middle of the graph, and it says 0.5, 0.5. We also have two knots at the bottom and top of the line. Now watch what happens if we move the knot in the lower left corner to halfway the y-axis. The lowest points of our terrain are now moved to half the world's height. And if we do the same for the upper right knot, we now have a flat world at half the world's height. Let me reset the curve and, to get some more feeling for this device, move around the middle knot. We now see the terrain starts to reshape following the curve. We can also add knots to the curve just by clicking somewhere on the graph. And by doing so, we get a better understanding of what it does. 
it becomes clear, this filter changes the elevation of a pixel based on its current height value and then changes the height to the new value on the curve created by us. And that makes this a very powerful device. To remove a point, we right click on it. There are also some actions we can apply to the curve. First, we can choose to clear all the knots at once, which removes all the knots and with that also the curve. If we now add one knot back again to the graph, we have created ourselves a bootleg constant device. We also have two buttons at the top, which allow you to switch between the move and the draw mode. The default is the move mode, in which we can move around knots and also add or remove them. Let's add a few more knots and then switch to the draw mode. By pressing down the left mouse button and moving it over the graph, the device will now try to move the knots to the height of the drawn line. This only changes the position of the knots on the y axis. And as you can see, it appears to not work perfectly with knots close to each other. But this behavior only crops up if you draw the line too fast. The curve we see is based on our knots and is drawn through it, following a certain algorithm that has to do with the smoothing of the curve. We can change the drawing algorithm with the curve type parameter. The default is monotone cubic, which is a variant of another type, cubic. In contrast to cubic, the monotone cubic type curve ensures that if, from left to right, a knot always has a greater y value, then the previous knots, the curve drawn through those knots, will never have a y value less than the previous point, also known as preserving the monotonicity of the knots if they are monotone to begin with. This is very mathematical and it is best to show you the visual difference between the types because that's what really matters. If we switch to cubic, you see this area suddenly dips and with that, gets a lower y value than the previous point. That's all. To us, it is just another flavor of curve. The last type, linear, is the simplest curve type there is. It just draws a straight line between the points. Fun fact, this also preserves monotonicity. The lower and higher parameters just below the curve allow us to set the minimal height and maximum height between which the curve filter operates. This comes in handy if you want to only apply this filter to a select area but wish to use the full range of the graph as this is a much nicer workflow. The final parameter, curve fade, lets you blend the effect of the device. By default it is set to 1 and when we decrease the value we see the effect of the curve diminishes and the faded curve is also shown in the graph. With the properties covered, we are left with the optional input to discuss. This is quite a unique input, as it accepts only the curve data type. So, let's add a sinusoidal curve and adjust curve device. We must tweak some settings and look at that, a nice sine wave shaped piece of terrain. This port is, just like the curve device itself, quite a powerhouse, as it allows you to also hook up a Perlin curve, and with that adds wicked noise to your terrain, but this is out of scope for this tutorial. The curve device is truly a powerful device, which gives you a lot of control over the distribution of height in your terrain. Be sure to play around with it and discover its potential uses. The last device to discuss is the bias gain device. This device allows you to quickly transform the terrain, also based on curves, but hidden behind two sliders. We, again, hook it up to a linear gradient device and open the properties. We see two parameters, aptly named bias and gain. The bias parameter controls how the input data of pixels is interpreted, at 0.5, it treats all height values equally, 
but as soon as we decrease the value, it begins to favor lower values, and with that, will decrease the height value of pixels. The opposite is true for a higher value, and now the pixels their height is increased. The gain parameter also has to do with how data is interpreted, but the gain effect is applied after the bias effect. When we decrease its value, we see only pixels with extreme values will retain their original value, whereas pixels with around the world's middle height will be either increased or decreased in value to approximate the world's middle height. If we increase the gain, values will rapidly become more extreme, and values at a quarter of the world's height are now quickly decreased to zero meters in height. The bias gain device is a very quick and simple filter to put some emphasis on the features of your terrain and is especially useful to accentuate the edges of a mask. And that's all for this episode. See ya!